Yo. Good how, evening. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing fine. I just had some issues with the game, so I had to restart and <clears throat> just came back. <laughs> Does it, did it sort it out for you? It did. All right. Let me uh, explain to chat what we're doing here. So for the next hour, uh, Zayon's going to explain to me some more basics of match rod fishing. And I guess the first thing I need to do is go to Volkov and actually buy a third match rod, right? I'd say so, yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, if they're not out of stock, but I don't think it is. Okay, let's go check it out. Um... How's the fishing been? It's been good. No, it's it's actually good. In fact, after we do this, uh, I'm gonna probably either hit amber for some carp, uh, carp rods, or I might do some bait fish for a while at tuba. I've got a ton of bleak to use tonight. So, but it's been fun. It's really been good. We got, in fact, there actually is a nice spot at Old Berg where we've been catching grass carp and black carp. You probably could do match there, but I'm happy to go to bear as well. Whatever you feel like is gonna be the most helpful. Oh, uh, what spot was on, on Oldenburg then? It's that spot it's down in the pond, that whatever it is, 5313 or something, this little like 10 meter yeah, clip. Yeah, yeah, it's the one with the tiny patch that yeah. sticks out from, um, that one has delivered before. I know some guy that actually caught, what was it? It was above 30, a black cop. Yeah. Um, the only problem yeah. is that Mozzie's got this challenge for me still to catch a trophy common, and that's not happening in that spot because <laughs> all it is it's like a hundred percent grass carp and black carp right now. Yeah, beer seems to be having that as well. Loads of grass carp, loads yeah. of. Uh, um, from what I've been told, it's mostly grass. So uh, what? So if we're trying to embrace the challenge, even though it's not ideal, should we just do amber again, or what do you think? Uh, or is it just better off to, for the purposes of what we're doing? I can always like throw out a match rod at amber later. For this purposes, are we better off at bear? Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Yes, we are. So um, I'm looking at the match rod. Oh, let me let me stream this to Discord in case it's more helpful for you to see the live view. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yep. I'm assuming that, okay, first of all, let me ask you this. Let's say somebody is getting into, uh, is, is like, you know, in their, let's say level 20 or so. And they're like, you know, I really want to focus on float fishing and they level up where they can use match rods. What is a sort of first match rod that you would suggest people get? Like, let's say they're wanting to target bream and that kind of fish. Karma. So the is it or, the sport or not? Uh, it's the sport. Okay. That's uh, sure you can go heavy, like more heavy into uh, a deeper rod down on. Um, it's called Bori, but it's more expensive. Okay, so comma uh, comma sport it would be the first one, and yes. which and which one? Of, I would go for the four point four. Okay, so the bottom one. So if anybody's looking for a good. Uh, initial match rod if you're targeting like small to medium fish the sport match 4.4 is what you'd say yep okay absolutely because the only thing that you need to remember though with the karma is that it's only allowing a real size matches up to 3000 which means that uh, you can't really go targeting with a, an alpha yep. for example yep so there's a different there's a thing to remember there that you need to make sure you got the correct real for it otherwise i would simply just go uh, i'm actually going to switch myself over to another map so i can also see at the same time i think i remember you saying that model one match wasn't very good right mm -hmm. that's correct it does allow more reels but you don't like the the stats the setup of it as much yes okay that's true uh the it, it's Basically, it's almost the same. Yeah. Sure. It, but if you don't have a, a two, um, a three thousand reel, then I would actually go for that one instead. Okay. And the one forty uh, XH, yep. the bottom one. 
the bottom one. Yeah. Okay, so now to carp fishing. Um, mm. It seems to me that the choices are between the Falcon match and the Rebellion match, and for not much more silver, you would just go Rebellion, right? Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and for that, uh, the main reason for that is because the Rebellions has all the bonuses. Yeah, absolutely. Like the bonus, the bonuses for uh, the from the Rebellions are pretty much out out staring the silverfish because it also has almost the same load capacity as the silverfish it has the silverfish has like 43 i think if i'm not mistaken i'm gonna look at it yep. now yep the one i have is 44.1 yeah 44 and there's a three kilo difference which is yeah practically none yeah it's non-existent now with rebellion match make sure you're looking at one of the top two not the bottom one exactly that's that was the next point yeah the bottom one is a light yeah rod. and i have the top one and i don't know if the reason why i did that was because it's a little shorter so i could use it in a boat easier um mm -hmm. is there a compelling reason to get the bot the middle one instead the compelling reason uh for it is that you want the longer rod you have the, the more pressure you can put on the fish with yeah. the rod yeah the shorter rod you have the more pressure you put on the fish, it also pressures the rod more. Yeah. So the longer rod you have, it extends it and makes it more easier to use the rod when you bend it, mm -hmm. sort of put pressure on the fish. The and longer you have, the more pressure and the less damage the rod takes. Does it also impact casting distance, having a longer rod? It, it impacts it because the longer you have, the more easier it is to actually throw it in a straight line. The shorter it is, it, it it's more easier to uh, for it to like wobble to the left or wobble to the right. Uh, when I'm using my rods, for example, the the longer I have, I also know that the easier it is to cast straight where I want the float to land. Yeah, more accuracy as well. Yep. Exactly. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bottom one since I already have a top one that I can use in the boat if I want to. I'm gonna for my second one. I'm gonna get the one that you recommend here. Um, the middle one? Yeah. I'm going to post this in chat real quick. Somebody was asking about the bottom types. This website, Kilted Jock's website, has a bottom tab on it. And it doesn't have everything, but it's got a lot of the significant bottom spots. All right. So we're going to get the 420H. Mm -hmm. And now I need to get these set up. So let me take a minute here to... Um, all right, I've got the Tagara on one. So we'll put the Lacerti on the other. Just kidding. Okay, let me find <laughs> where my, uh, like the Evia might be an option, right? Uh, the big boy caliber. Um, works as well. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll do that instead of the gold. So we'll do the caliber. And the Evia. Okay, so let's look at the one I already have set up. Uh, what kind of uh, baits are we going to be using at Bear? Uh, we are looking into cocos and cream. Okay. Uh, for, for starters, and then we are slightly looking uh, into banana. And st uh, I've, I've received some tips that they are biting on strawberry as well. Okay. I'm not really sure what type of spots that are active at the moment okay. i think there's one spot that is really short casting it's just 17 meters um which is uh, pretty much where you start and we have 450 4450 then we have 50 560 63 as well so, so that we first spot is spots. the what 33 51 or whatever yeah yeah 55 uh, 30 or 55 30. 31 yeah yeah um okay so in that case, how does this setup look? I've got a 27 kilo, 30 centimeter uh, braided mm -hmm. leader. Are we good with that? Yep. We're good with that just for, just for now. Okay. Uh, uh, and this is something that I also can point out to the people that are actually uh, viewing the stream right now. The longer leader you have when you float fish, 
the harder it is to hook the fish. But there's also a good side to it. The longer leader you have, the less spookier it is for the fish as well. Hmm. So there's a downside for a longer leader, and there's also a downside for a shorter shorter leader. Because if you have a shorter leader, it's more easy for the fish to get spooked. But it's also more easier to hook the fish. So, like, you can always mixture it up. Like, you can go deep. But it's also a downside for that. And you can go short, and it's always a downside for that. Mm -hmm. the, main yeah. re the main reason that when I use a really short leader, like 20 centimeter, is when I'm fishing at really shallow depths. Like when it's not over two meters, mm -hmm. uh, and if I target reams, for example, I kind of want to get a good straight opportunity to hook them. Um, and when I hook fish for reams, I always use a twenty centimeter uh, fluoro just to to reduce the visibility. Okay. And that's what I mainly use when I float. Uh, I tend to lean towards the, the fluoro section. And oh, fluoro that's right. Is, <clears throat> the fluoro is more invisible to, in the water, so it reduces the chance of the fish getting spooked by it. It also has a very uh, impact uh, rate. It also has a good resistance. The, the fluoro is kind of stiff, which means if you get a hook into a big fish, it's going to reduce those head shakes and the chance of you losing tension to the fish. Do you think I should use 22 size or 16 size on the cocos and cream? I would go 16 first, just to try to find the fish. And if there is fish in the area, they, they tend to bite on the more smaller bodies. But it's mainly just to get a confirmation that the fish is in the area. Okay. All right, two of them That's... are set up. <clears throat> I'm just going to set mine up as well. Yep. I was to Amber just before this, and I was lucky, actually. She had some good fishing? Uh, 35 kilo framed. Woof. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, the, I'm, so using, can do, I'm using 8 meter, I mean, 8 gram uh, wagglers. Is that going to be heavy enough? That's going to be, yeah, it's going to be enough. All right. I am going a little bit smaller on the leader size on this last one, the one that has the caliber going 23 kilo fluorocarbon mm -hmm. leader. Yep. And there has been some reports as well that the golden tench are biting on the cocos and cream 16. So if you use a short, um, tiny leader, that might increase the chances to, to get one. Okay. Because the, the golden tench is extremely sensitive. They are so easily spooked. Wow. When I target them, uh, when I did target them, I was using 18 kilo leader, wow. which is a risk. It's a risk itself that you are using an 18 kilo leader on bear. Because mm -hmm. if you hook into a big fish, you are going to be in for a long fight, especially if it's a grass. Yes. Since they fight so heavily. Yep. So I'm going to be using coconut cream set up on one. Then the other one, I'm going to be using banana. And then you can just kind of tell me what you're seeing. I can switch if I need to. Um, yep. All right, let me get this last match rod favorited so it's easier to set them up. Um, let's see, here it is. Draw. What's up, water rat? All right, so is this the one with, yeah, there's the Tagara. All right, so let's just make sure that if we do switch to banana, I've already got the boilies. We'll be using oh, pop-up still, right? Yep. Okay. okay. And that's, a, that's the thing you can actually tell the other people as well that are in the chat right now. If you are going to Bear, make sure you visit the shop because yeah. Bear doesn't have a shop. So it's going to be a waste of money if you go there and you're not prepared. Am I going to be doing any dry mixes or um, stringers? Um, I can I do have a recipe that tends to, that has been giving me good fishes, so I can send you, like, plenty of them. I, I think I have, like, plenty of them laying in the bag. <laughs> okay, so don't make any before we go. Yep, 
I okay. can I I can give you spot mixes for it. So I think I have both all three set up. Both <laughs> or banana. Yeah, I do. And you are Zeon in the. Am I saying that right? By the way, Zeon. That's correct. Okay. You're Zeon in game two. This is Zeon Relicate. He's going to teach me some of the basics of carp fishing using match rods for the next hour. Look at that frame sided albino carp. Nice. <laughs> um, it's kind of it, it's kind of fun to. Ever since I made that uh, guide on the forums and you, two YouTube videos I, that I scratched up, so many people have actually uh, started. Uh, yeah. Match fishing, yeah, more, and I'm kind of glad that yeah. they are because it's a it's a really fun way to fish and it's really fun to interact with the game. Um, most of the people that are playing the game are casting the rods out and maybe go a little bit AFK, not watching the game like doing other stuff because when you're using bottom for uh, bottom rods, I mean the fish outlooks itself. Oh, it's yeah, it's way more interactive and can be way more uh, intense as well. <laughs> Just yeah. the attention it requires, yeah. yeah. It requires you to actually pay pay attention to the game, which I kind of enjoy. And I mean, the uh, the feeling of landing trophy mm. on on floats with match, comparing it to bottom, um, it it's it's a nice, it's a really nice feeling because. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's I was bottom fishing for so long, and I got tired of the game basically, and I was looking for options to make the game fun again. And that's when I found match fishing, and yeah, I was I was hooked. All right, are you going to be at fifty five thirty one or fifty five thirty three? Fifty five thirty one. All right, we we're clipping uh, seventeen here. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to make sure that I had the correct. Yep. I think. The is around 10 or 3 15 if i'm not mistaken <sighs> normal finn wants me to try to say something to you uh yeah, hopefully okay. it's it's not uh hopefully i'm not saying something bad here god not ach sav got hmm. good night not sleep really sure well what that means. I, I don't know it's swedish for good night sleep well i probably just didn't say it right but good night you sleep well as well normal finn Okay, so yeah. I guess I should get my marker rod out and actually see the depth here. You probably already know, but let me just do it for funsies. Do it for funsies, and that's it's kind of good that you brought that up as well. Because when you are when you are slow fishing, uh, which I also explained in the guide, when you get to a certain spot and you are on really unsure how deep it is, always use a marker rod. Yeah. Every single time, and the reason for that is that when you cast out get the depth what i usually do uh but i got most of the depth in my head or in the, the file i'm using and i'm writing everything down is that i tend to cast for, like look at the clock for example i tend to cast from 10 o'clock to two o'clock and by doing that i work my way in towards 12 o'clock which means i'm scanning the entire area getting to getting to know wh what the depth is if it changes because it can like mm. bear it can change a lot for example if you cost three meters to the left it can be three meters and if you cost three meters to the right it can be 320 and that will affect um will it uh, it will affect the way of your f if um, the way you're fishing because you need to adjust the depth accordingly to what it says and for you sure. always have, and you always have to uh, use. Um, you always have to add the leader. That's that's what people. Mm -hmm. I've been receiving some uh, some questions about it. Like, do I add depth or do I sub subtract it? Well, the answer for that is, if the float is laying flat on top, you need more depth. No, no, no. Oh, sorry. If the if the float is laying flat on the surface when you cast out, it means it's, you're going too deep. It's too deep, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
So I'm showing 2.6 here. Is that what you normally see? And if anybody cares about bottom, it's yep. clay, at yep. least where I cast. So 2.6. So if I've got a 30 centimeter, I need to go 2.9 yep. around that, correct? Correct. Okay. All right, we'll set it at 2.9 and see how it, 17 meter, 2.9, yep. see how it sits. Should sit fine. Okay. <clears throat> Bear is like one of the most well fished lakes for for match. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It absolutely is. Because people, uh, if you try it on amber, you are going to be casting further out. Like you are targeting, like most of the times you're fishing at 35 meters, but if you're doing it uh, on, am on bear, uh, the most longest rod that I am fishing at on this is at 32, if I remember correctly. Yep, 32. It's embarrassing to... Uh to admit, but I bet I don't have, I have zero points in fishing with a match rod. So you are dealing with a, um, I've got a lot of things working against me here. <laughs> Casting accuracy among the top ones. <laughs> things that's working against me. I'm actually, while we were just, <laughs> while we were talking, I'm out to hook on two rods. One on cookers and cream and the other one on banana. Oh, really? Yep, and the banana one, I think it's, this feels like a grass, let's see. Yeah, it's a grass carp. It looks like my Six. one right in. So you got a 4.6 grass carp already, okay. I guess I'm just going to have to remember the colors here. I've got blue left, yellow, middle, red right, okay. Yeah, the wagglers that came with the nears are extremely good. Yeah. Because you can easily use them on Tuguska as well. Um, so that you know when they go down in the, in the river. Like that one is number one. That one is number two. Yeah. That one is number three. Depending on the color. So my blue, my first rod, the blue, I don't know if I'm just a little too far to the left with it, but it's laying down weird. Check the, uh, look, okay. Check the rod. What needle length are you using there? Oh, uh, yeah. Maybe I'm... 30, yeah. Is that the blue one? Yeah. Uh, uh, pick it up and check the depth again. Uh, press uh, the plus so I can see how deep you're going. If you changed it or not. Hmm. You actually have... Oh, you got a fish. Yeah. Wait. Strike it, strike it, strike it, strike it. <laughs> Let's see if it's still messing with it. Doesn't look like it. No. So maybe I'll just go to like 2.88 or something. Yep. It's it definitely be... laying down. Try 280 then. Let's see okay. why it does that. That's just. I don't know if it's if I'm a little far farther left. You know. Oh like... yeah. We were actually. I was telling you wrong. What the depth was? Did you did you say that I was two point five, right? No. Uh, hold on. Where I first cast it, I was getting a depth of two point six. Yeah, and if the further left you go, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. is more shallower. So okay. Try so to go down to. Uh, I'm gonna cast a little bit farther shift. right for now. Yep. See if it. Shift. It should shift because I'm using yeah, it is. 315. I'm using 315 with a 60 centimeter hair. Okay. And it's yeah. There you go. Now it's standing. Mm -hmm. The more yeah, that's that's a very good point there. Uh, everybody could see that because as you can see, it shifts. It shifts yeah. depending on where you're casting as well. 
Um, so you need to bear that in mind. That's when the mark rod really comes into play. Yeah. You, you can scan the area you're casting in to know that, okay, it's more shallow to the uh, left and it's more deep to the right. Now we wait. Okay, I actually caught one on strawberry as well. And since we're not using PVA or anything, I guess I could just switch any one of them to a different bait, right? Yeah, I mean, if we go more heavily into cocos, for example, uh, I can just send you the spot mixes. Uh, there's one. I'm going to try strawberry on uh, my far right one, just because I know that for... Strawberry's been working really good for me on... Um, fishing this spot on carp rod, so... Ooh. Wait, did I imagine that? Isn't there... Oh, I think I missed a bite while I was in the rod vin menu. Oh, really? Yeah. Yellow was going crazy when I came back up. That's what That's what I mean, people. Watch the floats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm we'll tell gonna, you everything. Recast. And while I was doing that and watching your stream, I'm getting a bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I came back out of the menu and the it was just yellow was like completely underwater. Oh man, like that's the cutoff right there. If I go too far left from that where that yellow is right now, any left yep. of that, it's a different depth. Yep. And I don't have points in match rod, so my casting is all over the place there we go that one's gonna work i think all right yellow i think that's a bite oh, isn't wait. it yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a bite to a bite as well oh this is tiny yes it's all right finding grass yep. i'm actually gonna keep my Rods up for a second, just watch you when you do this. So, I actually, can give you the hints on when the fish is biting or not. Let's see. Okay. Interesting. So, that time it went a little further right, and now yellow's laying down. So, that spot where it's 2.6 must be fairly narrow. Yeah. I'm going to go. It should be fairly. So, so. Th that's one other thing that you also can uh -oh. take into consideration. Uh oh, okay. Watch it. Just watch it. Watch uh, it. Oh. Did I do it too fast? Yep, you did. I thought it was going okay. crazy. All right, let me just recast. It was just nibbling there. Okay. I got to remember all this nibbling stuff. <laughs> I, I kind of felt like I was starting to like at least see it some of the time the other night at Amber. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I've slept since then, so... Yeah. <laughs> I got to get back in the swing of things. All right, so one, one, two, three, three's out of order. All right, I'll watch them. I always pull it too fast. That's my problem with float fishing is I'm so impatient. All right, so that dry mix is if we end up going all cocos, right? Yep. Okay. So what's, what I tend to use as well is that when I go uh, approach the spot I'm fishing, I'm going up to the really where the, my character really can't go any further, up to the edge of the water. Then I slowly back and I press zero key to put down the rod as close as I can to the shoreline. Because then I know that when I'm casting out, I'm going to be maxing it with mm. the clip that I'm using. Okay, okay. That's what I always do, mm -hmm. um, even, even when I'm casting the marker rod. I bring out the marker, I go up to the edge, and I spam click zero. And where it sets down the rod, that's... I just stop, bring it up, cast it out, mm, and I mm -hmm. know, okay, if I'm clipping here, I know the correct depth as well. Uh, One's getting you nibbled. Can... Yep, see. That one, he's just nibbling now. He's just mm -hmm. toying with bait. He's tasting it. He's, he's not doing really anything. This is a perfect example. Like, you can see, he's just tasting it. He's slowly tasting it. Not going aggressive. There he is. You see the switch? Yeah, I saw the switch, but I didn't get it. Yep. But yeah, I definitely saw it. And don't and don't grass carp tend to nibble a lot anyway? Like, yeah. aren't we going to be seeing 
Oh, you're right. I was not all the way. That might have been my problem is I was like yep, yep. easily two feet away from the shore. <laughs> yeah, that, might, that, that might explain it. Actually. Yeah, Let's yeah, see. yeah. So I probably can put them back all on the same depth and then just start casting. Yeah, you see, right you see, you see that one. Yeah. That that's the issue, M Dog. You were too far away from the shore. Yeah. That one is barely standing up. So. Ooh, dang. <laughs> Already in. Let's see. Let's see. It's got to be. It. Yeah, there you go. When it dove. When it went all the way down, right? Yep. Yep. Oh my goodness! I caught a common carp, Maz. Weapon three. You cast, and you slowly back up where it says just spam. There you go, exactly. And when you lift the rod at that point, just recast just from there. The yeah, do the exact same thing with the other rod. And when you lift up and fight the fish, you stand still. You don't move. Yeah. You stand still, fight the fish, because you know it's going to be on the same. Let's see, that one should... Yeah. There you go. Now they're all a little bit too short for my taste, but still. Yeah, in, in, in fact, <laughs> you know, those are the two rods that I put... Uh-oh. Uh, let's see. Just watch it. Watch it. It's just nibbling. Not aggressive. Just watch the tip. Not a, he's not eating it. He's just going slightly. Almost look like a double to me, though. Ah, uh, I just wait. Okay. He's still, he's still tasting. He's not pulling it. He's just it. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Nice. I like it. So when he, you, you can easily see when he, he, he switched. He turned like he, he went more aggressive on the bait. Yeah. That's a good indication, like, okay, now it's the time token. Oh, shoot, I should have changed that uh, depth. Yeah, because one and two are now at, like, five meters, I'm sorry, centimeters too short. That's why they look so low in the water, right? Yep. Because I adjusted yeah, like, them. Yep. Because the re I, I was thinking to myself, this is, this doesn't look right. Yeah, and yeah. When you yeah. adjusted it, 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 well, it proved it pretty good so the red one is the only one that's actually at the right depth and it's standing up yep. pretty much perfect the other ones are uh, as mm -hmm. you can see they are actually at the correct uh, depth by the looks of it because what you want to look at the waggler is that the, the tip of the one on every each and every float is that the tip you want it to be above if it goes up it, if it sinks down and goes up to the tip and it just above the tip as well it's on the bottom, but it will be really hard for you to actually see when the mm -hmm. fish is eating the bait. Like yeah. when it goes from nibbling to eating, because it can drag it down, especially if it's a heavy fish. It can drag down on the water, and you might think that he's eating on it, but he's actually just nibbling. Hmm. You might lose a fish because you can't really tell the difference when the float is on the water. Mm -hmm. Unless it goes really aggressive on the tip and you can actually see it goes aggressively down then then you can tell the difference so if the float is standing like yellow and the blue one i would increase the depth mm -hmm. perhaps between five to ten to make the waggler go even further up yeah uh, to give you a good uh, to give you a good indication yeah and i will I don't actually have the stream chat open right now, so I can't really see if people are asking questions about it or if they just are. Yeah, y'all feel free to ask. If you've got questions about float fishing, especially match rod, but float in general, let us know. M-Dog learning, so, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. Do you ever do this a lot? Get stuck in the water? Yeah, yep. And you have to pick up a I rod do. to get unstuck? <laughs> I bet you do. I do. Yep, right. I do. Oh, I didn't mean to pull this one. I meant to pull the other two. Yeah, he is doing a great job explaining everything. I'm trying to be in as informative as I can. I've 
people have been asking me in game, um, I, which is absolutely fine. If you guys have any questions in game later after the stream or any other day, if you want to get into the boat, just just don't hesitate to ask. I will gladly help you. Um, I was helping some people uh, on a individually level where I was adding them to Discord and we were sh sharing stream uh, sharing screen so to speak so I could actually show them yeah and they can show me because some people were asking me there was this uh, guy yesterday that added me on on Discord asking me my float is laying flat what am I doing wrong and I was trying to explain to him that when the float is laying flat you're too deep you need to increase the depth and when the float sinks under it the thing that what happens when the float sinks under is that you can, it can be numerous things that makes the float go under you can be too shallow so the float doesn't hit the bottom and then goes up above the surface it can also be that the waggler that you're using is not suitable for uh, the bait mm -hmm. that you're using because the size some of baits it. are heavy. Yeah. yeah. Some some baits are heavy. Oh, oh. let's see. Let's see. Wait, 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 wait. It's just nibbling. Not eating. Wait, wait. Look at the look at this now, chat. He's, oh, nope, I'm nope. so sorry. I didn't do it. No, I'm, no, no, no. Oh yeah. The bait. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Swamp Donkey's got a question for you. And I think this may be some personal preference, but you, you can answer it. Why would you not leave the bale open on the reel so you can pick them up and not disturb the fish? The reason I'm not leaving the bale open is that if I do, and the fish starts to nibble heavily and he starts to nibble for a little while, it's going to create the slack on the line between the float and the rod. So when he actually eats the bait and you lift, you're going to have to close the bell reel in the slack line and then hook the fish but if you keep the bell closed and watch the float like m dog is doing now the second you lift you hook at the same time using control and right mouse button i rarely ever leave the bell open the only time i'm leaving the bell open is when i'm fishing in, in rivers of uh, tungus that's the only time i'm leaving the bell open otherwise i'm keeping them closed because i don't want that slack line out to the float because if I leave the bell open the fish starts eating and he starts moving he's going to create a slack line and it's going to wait wait yep good good call it's going to create a slack line which means that when you lift the rod and actually hook the fish it's good one <laughs> that one actually out to hook itself then dog I think, I think so yeah away. yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't have mattered what I did I think that one that fish was on it's no another what. common. Nice. I hope that answered your question. That the main reason I'm not leaving it open is because it creates a slack line towards the float, and it's going to actually increase the chance of you spooking the fish when you try to hook it, uh, because there's too much line between you and the float, so it doesn't have the tension that you need to hook the fish. into another one right away. Mm -hmm. Just wait. See, these common carp haven't been as bad, but I feel like the grass carp nibble forever sometimes. Yeah, they, yeah the, the grass carp does nibble a lot. There you go. He's switching. He's switching. I probably waited no. too long then. Yeah you, yeah, you did. So you saw him bouncing back and forth. That's what gave you the... Yep, that's what gave me... Give me the indication that he was eating there. But what if you're uncertain about that point, for example, if um, what what just happened was a perfect example that if you're unsure that he's actually eating, I would lift as soon as I st I see the, um, the the provocation on the waggler there. But for me to do that, I need to also make sure that that I have a good window of opportunity to do it. If I see that okay now nah, it might be just a short uh, feeding session there i'm not gonna do it and just um, keep watching I'm just gonna leave yeah and just keep watching let him yeah. do it then he goes back to nibble and then he goes back in he's 
Did he say anything in chat, by the way? Um, the person that was asking regarding the bell. Yes. The... Uh, he said, makes sense. Thanks. All right. Yeah. So Black Belt, when you said you caught 21, you mean you got gold tinch in this spot? Were you on um, Coco 15s? Is that what you were catching the golden tinch on? Oh, you're on Mulberry 15. Golden tinch on Mulberry 15. Interesting. Yep. I saw some um, I, um, some of the records on uh, Bear when it came to golden tinch. It was on, I think it was on Mulberry. Yeah. You see that? But it has, just look at the bait sections on on Bear right now. You can It's hold. all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the place. The, it's same, the same goes for Amber right now. It's yeah. all over the place. Yeah. It's... Some people are catching leathers on mulberry, and then you're catching other stuff. Crab section, um, and <clears throat> from what I've seen, most of the people is, uh, on amber right now is using the snowman rig, crab muscles, soluble, and then... That's what I was going to try tonight. I haven't tried that yet, yeah. and I've been hearing about it. Yeah, it's uh, that some guy from our chat caught four trophies on that setup today. Yeah. One mirror, one blue tag common. Yeah, that's the person uh, that messaged me, actually. They were messaging Holtus, me, I, telling me that, yeah. Yeah, it's Holtus. Yep, yep, exactly, that's who it was. Mm. So, Terrible, you were using carp rods uh, with pop-up, mulberry 15, mulberry corn, I'm assuming. Is that pretty much the way you were catching the golden tench? That's interesting. All right, I'm getting one on three. Mm. Yeah, let's see. Uh, 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 leave it. Oh. Leave it. Come on, Really? I got it. it. I oh. couldn't. I couldn't leave it anymore. <laughs> it looks like it was so aggressive. It was aggressive, but I wanted you actually yeah, to yeah. see. <laughs> All right, and this is on strawberry. My other two are on cocoa. All both of them seem to be going off pretty reasonably, though. Yep. Every ten, one oh. every ten fish. That's amazing. <laughs> terrible. What? Um... The golden tench. He was getting one golden tench out of every ten fish with that setup today. Oh really? That's kind of that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. The golden tench is elusive. It is. I, uh, I don't have a trophy yet. Neither do I. Uh, I was I, actually, I I was looking to get into try to catch that golden tench, but so it's time consuming to actually try to get one mm -hmm. as a trophy size because yep. they are so rare to actually try to hit. Oof. Oh, there you go. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, he, he... Wait, wait, wait. See how much slack he just I, made? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take I him, should take just him, do take it. Him. Yeah, I waited way too long. I was just trying to, like, watch what he was doing there. That was weird. Uh, it was <laughs> yesterday, not today. It was much slower with the gold. Oh, today was slower? So that was all yesterday, huh? Hmm. Uh, so. Yeah, it was slow for me uh, this morning when I woke up and yeah. went to Amber as well. Uh, the spot where I caught the fr uh, caught framed trophy yesterday it was it was nearly died out. I think I got three fishes in like 15 minutes. It was mm. from yesterday where I actually caught 30 fishes in an hour. To like catching three in 15 minutes, it completely died out on me. Mm. But that, but that can also happen. Just what you guys saw there, the fish aggressively nibbles, so it actually creates a slack line. That can also happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and to counter that, I, it's a risky thing. To counter that, you need to lift, reel, and hook at the same time. Yeah. Do you keep your reel speed at 50 like you would like with bottom fishing? Uh, or do you, for that matter, not keep it that high? I keep it at 50. Okay. Uh, 50. All right. Yellow's going Let's off see. again. Yeah. Yep. Let's see. No, 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 no. Yeah. Just didn't get him. Oh, he's still... No, he's not. Still on. No, he's not. 
I, I, I kind of feel like that was the right time. It just didn't hook. Can't get them all, right? Yeah, you can't get them all. I mean, it's, that's what it is. <clears throat> in the amber pond, do you cast towards the middle or off to the side? If you're the normal spot there would be in the middle, towards the hole in the middle of the pond. Like 20 meter clip or something like that. 20. Yeah. Uh, uh, on the peg, uh, when you stand on the peg on the pond in amber, it's uh, clip 20. Isn't that 57, 139? Let me double check. I think that is right. Yep. yep. It's 57. Yeah. So if, if you if they were going to um, give float fishing or match rod fishing for carp uh, uh, some sort of bu uh, buff like make it a little better, how would you want them to adjust it? Well, better bite rate or what? Mostly um, the bite rate, but I would also see that they also gave float section some sort of buff when it came to um, to increase the intensity of the fish. Oh, wait, wait, there you go. It's in size as well, I think. Um, I would try to see them to actually increase the bite rate yeah. for starters. Yeah. But I will also like to see some. Sure, we can use spot mixes. We can use the cobras. We can use the slingshot. But I will also see like to use a stringer. Because the stringer is not really that heavy. Yeah, just attach the stringer on the match rod. Yeah, because now you have to what basically throw a feeder rod out to a carp rod, a carp rod out just to use to like feed it with a stringer, basically. Yeah, basically, I'm right now. I'm using a spod. Yeah. I'm casting one one meat. I, what I tend to use is that if I'm clipping at 17, I'm throwing the spot out at 18. So I'm feeding directly behind the spot. Then after the, after I'm casting it behind. I wait six hours, then I make a ground bait ball. The same recipe as the one I'm spotting with. Mm -hmm. Then I throw the ground bait one meter in front. Hmm. So you're getting a little by bit doing, behind, a little bit in front. Exactly. And by doing so, I'm creating, because from what I understood by the game developers is that it's a two meter spread mm -hmm. when, you, when you cross it out, which means I'm feeding with one spot behind or two, depending on the size of uh, the pellets and if you have any crushed boilies. Uh, it also comes down to the recipe, how big of a uh, big of a recipe you're using with big pellets or whatever. Um, if I use like a crushed boilie in the recipe, I only throw it once. If it's a size 18, 20 crushed in there, hmm. I throw it out once. After that, I wait six hours. Then I throw out perhaps two, three bait balls in front. Yeah. Which means I'm creating a, a feeding section between the, the the back line and the front line and my floats are in the middle. That's yep. a very good hook. Very good job. And by doing so, I'm creating, you know, uh, like uh, a square, mm -hmm. which means I'm in, I control the middle yeah. of my floats. Yeah, makes sense. I can, as I stated in the guide, I'm not an expert. I'm self-learned. I learned this type of fishing all by my own. Yeah. Because there was no, there was, there wasn't any guides whatsoever on on match rod fishing at all. Right. Uh, that's, I think, partially why I'm gray-haired today. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure it all out. Yeah, all the frustration and all the hours I put in to actually learn, learn it. Oh, yeah. Oh. Too early, wasn't it? It just, it got me. It made me think, but then as soon as I did it, I was like, yeah, I'm not really sure he's actually feeding yet. Oh, red's mm -hmm. going off now. Oh. It's red. 
Yeah, take him, take him, take, take red, take red. Thought I saw yellow move, but I don't think it did. That's oh, a little mirror. <laughs> Kyle just Somebody. said in chat, it's exciting to see you this flustered. I do get flustered when I'm float fishing. I, it's probably something I would enjoy off stream as much as I would on stream because then people aren't watching me uh, so intensely staring. And it's good fun though. Uh oh. It, it, it really is. Okay. Red, it's going off again. <laughs> good call. Really good. You saw the, you saw the difference right yeah. there, dog. Yeah. It just. The intensity, it was pretty obvious on that one, like the intensity changed between yep. the beginning of the feed and or the nibbling to when it was really yep. going for it. Yep. But it's also um, the key to to match fishing in my point of view is patience. Mm -hmm. Practice. Practice a lot. Um, try always to do your best. You will lose fish because of you not actually landing them uh, or hooking them. That will happen. There's no way you are going to hook every single fish. And the more sooner you're accepting that, the better. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise you will get so frustrated that you won't be doing it anymore. So always try to concentrate on how do I make myself better in this area where I'm trying to learn right now? Like, always have, always pay attention to the float. It's the float that tells you what to do. So I know I'm supposed to be spotting, but all I have is mm -hmm. spawn. Do you think spawn would help at all or no? Yep, it would help. Okay. I'm going to yep. spawn out. Now, I, should I take yep. the strawberry out of the water if I'm spawning with cocoa? I wouldn't normally do that, yeah. Okay. Uh, well, we can just leave it for now. Okay. Because now you have two setups with cocos, right? Yeah, that's right. Yep, that's that's fine. Okay. Ooh. Uh, there you go. Crap. Uh, you should have. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't set it down. <laughs> uh. Nice and steady. I mean, bear hasn't really produced that heavy fishes lately. Yeah. Uh, the last couple of days it's mo mostly been markers uh, some trophies has been caught but not many like comparing it to amber yeah. amber has been going off more with trophy sizes than bear lately yeah but bear was let's see bear was on fire a couple of weeks ago I think that's when you caught the big black carp m dog that's the section mm -hmm. I'm talking about yeah you know, when it yeah. It really was on fire. That was uh, pre-reset, right? Yeah. During that time, I think I stroked five trophies from bear. Mm. Two, two commons. Two grass carbs. Ah, three commons and two grass carbs. And then I got trolled on. Ah, you were too fast. Really? I thought it went back and yep. forth. But I got trolled on uh, the black carp as well, so. By the way, how much did that black carp pay you? It was 34 kg something, right? Yeah, I have no idea. Is that my most expensive? It might be, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's even better than a Russian sturgeon. Well, no, this Russian sturgeon was uh, cafe'd. I got to put it in the uh -huh. cafe so it wouldn't count. I, think, I don't think I got as much as I would have for this Russian trophy, but it uh -huh. was a lot, though. Whatever it was, it was a lot. I don't remember exactly. Well, for a fact, I spoke to a guy named Internet Stalker uh, a long time ago. Yeah, I know him. Or I know of him. Uh, yeah, he caught a trophy beluga. Mm-hmm. Uh, 567 kgs or something. I think he fought it for almost six hours. Yeah. That beast paid 9,800 silver. It's amazing. Yeah. Like, 
that's <laughs> that's insane yep. amounts of silver. Yep. Now he did a lot of damage to a rod and reel for that fight, but yeah, it's yeah, still a ton of silver though. It's practically a new sage rod. Yeah. Top section. Yeah. But basically, what I also want to mention is that you can use floats on any type of fish in this game. Mm. You can use them on sturgeons, you can use them on carp, you can fish in rivers with them. I mean, the biggest sturgeon I think I've caught on a float was 40. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's a tiny one for me. My friend has a beluga of 178 kilos on float. That's amazing. Mystic Nightmare says, isn't that what we're fishing for now, Trophy Beluga? I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> I am not prepared. Although well, I guess I wouldn't would... get spooled since we're on bear, but still. You wouldn't get spooled, but I don't think your gear would hold up. Yeah. <clears throat> so, basically, a flop. Yeah, it's night time. Sometimes it's active, sometimes it's not. The fishes on bear tend to wake up around four, mm -hmm. four in the morning. Yeah. Around th maybe three, four in the morning they tend to pick up again. Uh, which is kind of nice. Steelhead. Nice. My blue tag Russian sold for five thousand two hundred seventy-four silver. Blue tag Russian. Wow. That's that's nice. Yep. The blue tag rations, what are they? 100, right? 100 kilos? I think it's blue tag. I thought it was more than that, actually. Wait, did I just pull too up the fast. wrong one? Yeah, I pulled up the wrong one, too. I guess it's good that yeah. I pulled up the wrong one, then. Yeah, 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 it was good, because if you were going to pull it up when he went down and tagged it, you would have missed him. <laughs> uh huh. Yep, Steelhead said you're right. 100 kilos blue tag. There was a. a Luga that was caught by a Chinese player, I think. That was uh, maybe five months ago. He fought that beast for 12 hours until he lost it right by the shore. Yeah, I heard about that. That's well, happened well, a couple times. It's just depressing. I'm, I'm wondering if that actually was the first blue tag blue in the game. I'll be right back. I'm just stepping away for a minute, but I'll be right back. So, Chad, just a quick question while he's gone. How much do you enjoy seeing M-Dog doing this when he flutters because of the float? watching um, the chat now. You live vicariously through him, Mystic. Okay. And he's actually into a fish now. <laughs> the middle one is going off, as you can see. Perfect timing. Yep. I'm gonna watch the stream on Discord because it's not that. Let's see if the fish is still on though. Yeah, it is. There you go. Hmm. Nope. Interesting. Thought for sure I was gonna have that one. Yep. Oh, now strawberry's that. going off. Yep, let's watch it. 
He's on, he's on, he's on, he's on. He's it. <laughs> Sorry for that fast coming. No, 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 I like it. Yeah. Give me some that urgency. Was <laughs> <laughs> that, that was really obvious that he actually was on. Uh huh. Yeah, I guess if something's really active this time of night, there's a decent chance it's going to be a mirror. Oh, right. It was still coming up. I was like, why is my red halfway down in the water? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree with Mystic and the chat. Now we just need to hook all three at the same time. That can happen. I've had that happen. It's not, not that often, but it actually has happened. And what I just what I do when I see that is I lift one rod each and like the first rod I hook, set the rod down, go to the next one, hook, set the rod down, and then the third one I'm picking up and reeling in. So it can happen that you get a triple bite and that can be stressed out if you're not used to it. <laughs> Watching three floats at the same time. Mm. Uh, but as soon as you see one of them going eating frenzy eating frenzy on the bait Hook that one put it down let it run watch the other floats it might have been before you joined us mystic but early on we did get two at the same time which was uh fairly lucky that we that i managed that but i'm not sure that i'm ready for three kind of want to start getting used to watching them at one zoom instead of two especially when it's this close if it's this close you can easily uh, yeah pay attention to them by zooming in one yeah <laughs> two well you've won the game then yeah i mean i, I won tonight for <laughs> sure <laughs> like, that was tonight's victory yeah um Really enjoyable to see um, pro f um, float fishing in general. Uh, bottom fishing, everybody can do it. Uh, it's just a matter of PVA, pretty much. Mm -hmm. When you float fish, you can easily track home on a trophy as well without using any sort of PVA or spot mix. But of course, using a spot increases the chances depending on uh, the size of the pellets you're using spot or the type of bait but i also can tell that to anybody that is unfamiliar with using spot or using any type of ground bait is that always try to use the same mixture when you you make mix the ground bait balls and the spot mm, mix mm -hmm. when you're feeding a spot don't switch the recipe out always try to use the same uh, mix for both the balls and and the dry mix yeah because if you start experimenting with uh, the spot mix, for example, you throw that one out and then you experiment with the ground, ground bait, one of the two might attain an ingredient that the fish don't like. And you, instead of bringing the fish in to where you're fishing, you might be sp actually spooking them off mm -hmm. instead. Like they don't like the, the combo you made and I'm going to just give that away. And that might too early. Oh, I didn't watch that. Did you have a light on? Or? Yeah, I, I, I did. I'm, so it nibbled for a long time, and then it started to like. It seemed like it was getting excited, but it, I, I still went too early. I, I, as soon as I went, I was like, "Yeah, it's too quick." <laughs> Patience. <clears throat> yep. I need to just Patience. close my eyes and count to three, and then look again. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, nah, but eventually you'll learn. Yeah. I, I mean, you're on the good path of it. Everybody is struggling in the beginning, but once you practice a lot with it, you get the hang of it. It's the it, it goes the same with everything. 
you can also include ordinary life. I mean, you learn new stuff mm. that you are unfamiliar with. You practice, practice, you practice, and eventually, eventually you get good at it. Yeah. You, you tend to learn the curves and stuff like that. Good evening, Ayapu. Uh, we're doing a little, uh, Zayan's teaching me how to do a little match rod fishing for carp. Um, after this, we'll probably go either amber or tuba. And uh, amber, I, I mean tuba, I want to do some bait fishing. And then amber, obviously, we'll do a regular carp. Ooh, gosh. I'm going to say yes. And I might be wrong. I guess I'm wrong. Oh, I was watching. Oh. I should have told you. I'll, I'll start saying, hey, there's a bite. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm kind of surprised. That one looked pretty aggressive. So I don't know. I might just have missed that one. Match for Baltic sturgeon. Come on, Cole. <laughs> that doesn't sound That doesn't sound like the next challenge. I think you skipped several <laughs> in between this and that. <laughs> one more day till overcast it too. But yeah, I think I think maybe what that's what we'll do is just even if we're a little early, start bait fishing over there. All right, so what rod is that? Rod number one's got a bite on it. Blue. Um, uh, are you sure? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Watching it. Can you zoom in a little bit on the bite? Still nibbling. Just nibbles. Still just nibbling. He almost got me there. Uh, patience. <laughs> Oh, he's still nibbling. He's still toying with the bait. He's not eating it. I hope this really... There you go, there you go. He was, he was. Nope. Hmm. I, I should not tell you that. I, I, I should have kept my mouth quiet and just let it eat further. Uh, I, I kind of thought that... I mean, I, I was thinking the same thing when you said it. I was like, okay, that's hmm. so much more aggressive. But... I don't know. Watch, and the next bite, hopefully it's the same one, so I can let you just wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. I, sh I should have actually not said anything. I should have kept my mouth quiet there. I would have probably done the same. Let's see. Cole says, I wait until it submerges or shoots off to the right or left. If it submerges, um, it can it can be feeding. Sometimes they don't when it submerges. Uh, but most of the times they are actually eating the bait when it submerges. Um, and when it shoots off to the left and right, uh, it depends. If they just move with the bait slowly to the left or right, I'm just leaving it because the, the fish is not eating it. But, but if, if it's it really aggressive, shoots off, yeah. But if it goes to the side or the really aggressive, that's yeah, that's when I hook as well. It all comes down to it all comes down to what the float says and what the float indicates. I know you're gonna miss some bites this way, but it, it, there almost might be some benefit to really just sitting and watching some mm -hmm. nibbles to feeding or whatever that transition is without even ever picking yep. up the rod, just watching it over and over. Yeah, um, we can just we we can do that next okay. if you actually want that M dog. Okay. The next bite we are just gonna watch and I'll tell you actually when he's feeding, when he's nibbling, and when he shifts. If and and that and feeding. that process will keep going for a while before they actually yeah. just leave it, right? Yep. Yeah. It will. And sometimes the process ends up with them actually hooking them. Auto hooking. They, yeah. All right. Third yeah, one's gotten um, a bite right now. Yeah. Zoom in on it. We'll okay. see. aggressive already let's just watch the first bite that was aggressive okay now now he shifted over see now he goes over the nibbles now he's tasting the bait he's just tasting still just tasting even though he's even though he drags the bear on his little tip. there you go there you can see so the transition there a little yeah bit. yeah he's still feeding he, he's he's just nibbling now Still just nibbling. Still just nibbling. 
still just nimbling now. Just he's just toying he's just toying with the bait now. He's just tasting it, he's not doing anything, he's not moving it, he's just simply tasting the bait. And this process can take a while. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's a especially if it's a grass carp. They tend to nibble a long time before they actually struck home and take the bait and start feeding on it. Still just tasting. It's not eating it. Still just tasting it. Pretty aggressive. You think still, uh, still nibbling? He, yeah, yeah. He's still nibbling. If you would have lifted there, you would have missed him. He yeah. still nibbles. He's still just nibbling the bait. He's toying. And so many people that are unexperienced, as you, as you just said, you would have lifted there. Mm -hmm. And he, he might have just... Oh, there you go. Oh. He toyed with you. Mm. <laughs> he came back and just drove it down and then left. Long, painful process. Yeah, it's a long, painful process. And sometimes... What about if, What about if the float completely lays down? Cole wants to know. If the float completely lays down, that means that the fish has actually lifted the bait from the bottom and is slowly moving upwards, mm -hmm. like towards the surface. That means that the float doesn't really have the connection to the bottom and it will lay flat. Sometimes you can hook the fish there, but most of the times I would just leave it until the fish lets go and then goes back into feeding on it on the bottom because then you will see the difference. You can, you sure, you can try to hook it, but it, it will be hard because there will be a slack line underneath the float towards the bait, it will be a curve, it will be like a difference between it. Don't pick it up, M Dog. Leave it. <laughs> there you go, there you go, there you go. <laughs> I'm like, he took it somewhere far away. <laughs> yep. I tell you, Wormy, if y'all end up setting up a, a comp, I will join you. I, I, but I just don't know how long I'm going to stay at tuba my main goal tonight was to spend a lot of time at amber but i do want to do a little bit of bait fishing so if if that's something bad fish wants to hook up i'll join but after my uh sessions up here it is fun terrible it's actually a lot of fun third one again that strawberry's getting all the bites right now yeah. uh oh something else is biting too oh. oh that's good let's see Let's zoom in I think you'll see two, both of them. Oh, there you go. So now it's got to watch uh, the yellow. Yeah, watch the other one. Be, be prepared to pick that yeah, one yeah. up as well. It's hiding behind Straight the blue. The, uh, I can see that. There you go. Watching it. He's just nibbling. Don't touch him. <laughs> <laughs> let, him feel, let him get comfortable. You know, there's not a, a, there's really not a downside to, like you're saying, be patient. I mean, even if you miss, miss a time, he'll probably do it again. You know what I mean? Like yep, the yep. worst case yep. scenario is being too quick. Would you have gone there? Nope. Okay. Oh. No, I would. No, yeah. no, no. You see the transition there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still on. Wow. I'm surprised he waited that long. You saw that transition there when he really went from like slowly eating to boom. Mm -hmm. 
goes straight into aggressive and then actually eats the bait completely. Yeah, <sighs> yeah I mean, I, I really probably will do that, Wormy, but I'm, I just... I don't know how long I'll stay, but yeah, I'll probably go at the end of this hour, head to tuba with bait fish. Um, don't you wish casting other float back out would cause reaction or panic bite in the game? <laughs> yeah. Just oh. land the float right on top of the fish that's... Oh, we finally if got one actually, on one. If, uh, it's actually funny that he mentions that because in real life, when you fish with wagglers, you can fish with a style... Oh. Double bite again. I'll 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 come back to that after okay. this one. We'll see if. Let's see, the blue one is still nimble. The red one took off. Mm -hmm. and he might come back, so just leave it for now. Mm -hmm. Just let him nimble. Let him nimble. Still not aggressive. He's just. Some people might have thought that mm -hmm. that part was. Because it did aggressive. go back and forth a little bit, and it was bouncing mm -hmm. a little bit heavier, but not like mm -hmm. it does sometimes. Cole saying in real life it works. Spook causes reaction bites. That's probably what you were going to get to, wasn't it? When you, when you fish with wagglers in real life, there's a there's a certain style that we call a splashy waggler, which means that when you are the fish will react to that splash. They mm -hmm. will come up from the bottom, up, and see what the splash was, hmm. and that's your pe and that's your bait. Nope. Hmm. Oh no 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 no! I told you not to lift him. You did. <laughs> Look how far underwater that red one is right now. Oh, take him. Oh wait, he comes up again. Watch him now. But the splashy waggler that I was mentioning is basically you. Oh, wait. Take him, take him. Good. Uh, the the splashy waggler style that I was mentioning is that you cast out. The fish will come up from. They will come up from the bottom to investigate the, bl the splash. Mm -hmm. The only thing they will see is your bait from the float. If you got it, if you don't have a bite within 10 seconds after doing that uh, type of fishing, you're really in splash. Interesting. And hmm. it's a really you. You really are working. Uh, the area you're fishing by yeah. doing so. Yeah. Cost. Flash comes. Weight comes down. No bite in 10 seconds. Really in. Repeat the process. Hmm. It also tells you to remember to breathe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a really good t tip, actually. I think I was <laughs> holding my breath during those last uh, bites. Waggler and also the wagglers in <clears throat> in general is a very fun way to fish. Extremely fun. Hmm. One. Actually that's right. three. Ooh. Quick. Oh, yeah. That's he's gone. on he's auto hooked. <laughs> he's auto hooked himself. I don't know what you're talking about auto hooking. That was all me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> 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 it rarely happens though sometimes it does sometimes it doesn't yeah um, it's nice when it does it. yep but it all comes down to the leader size and um, the length of it as well hmm. the longer leader less chance of auto hook oh, okay. it's rarely uh, rarely none the shorter leader you have, the more chance of you spooking the fish from taking the bait, but it also increases the chance of 
the fish auto hooking themselves when they feed mm -hmm. the bait. Call Kid says I only match fish in real life. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, Kyle. Most, some of the absolute records still exist today on the carps. Uh, has been caught on match, by the way. Is that right? Yep. If I can actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, and some of that is because, like, when, uh, isn't it, wasn't it Honey Doe or something? Uh, something was just, like, so powerful when it first released, right? Big leather that Levo caught. Yeah, that was Honey Doe. Single Honey Doe. And that was, is it three years ago? And mm -hmm. that hasn't been beaten. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but for example, if you look at the, the common carp absolute records, mm -hmm. that one is uh, actually on uh, match on amber. That garlic and mussels one? Yep. Uh, I spoke to the guy. Wow. He's also a match fisherman. So what are you looking at uh, going later, uh, amber or tuba? Um, I'm going to tuba first. I just don't know how long I'll stay. I've got a bunch of bleak. I just want to fish through. Um, that spot is so Xander heavy. Mostly what I'll catch is Xander, but I'm hoping to get a couple bellows at the same time. And then um, after that, I'll probably go down to 168, 169 and try out that soluble crab, um, crab corn snowman rig for a bit. I would actually try that. I agree on that part. See how it's working for me. Mm -hmm. Did I miss a bite? Nope. Oh, you missed a bite, yes. Did I miss a bite? No, yep. I actually got it that time. Nope. And it's a nice. common. Nice. It was quick. It was not a long, it was a common carp. So it was almost immediately transitioned. The bellow spot, uh, perp it's at, actually, I don't have an exact it's around 136, 62, but it's a little bit farther Southeast from that, but it's close to that. It's right into that six meter hole, basically down at, uh, tuba. All right, Zam, what do you say we go till noon? We're almost at an hour now, but let's stick here till noon. Just see if we can get a couple more. A couple more in. And then, and then I'd say you you head down to Tuba. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep the entertainment up as well. Yeah, but I'm, I've enjoyed this. We should do this every once in a while. When you're around, if I'm streaming and you're around, just let me know. We can do it again sometime. All right, there's a Absol pretty aggressive oh. from the start. Yeah, he was. Let's see. Nibbling. Oh, don't do it. No, 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 no. All right. I don't think I messed it up. Nope, I did mess it up. Yep. Dang it. That was good. Huh? Oh, wait, wait. No, he's still there. He's still there. You're lucky. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait until he transitions. Oh, <laughs> the right one is a bite. <laughs> Good job. Let's see if he stays after you put him down. Yeah, he does. Nice. I 
guys shift over there. Very good. <laughs> There's no way I would have would have waited if it was just me. I would have totally gone right there. <laughs> oh, that was so strong. Yeah. Uh, just wait. Give him time. I think I nearly waited like four in real life. <gasps> there you go. There you go. Yes. Yes. There you go. Did you hear me go? <gasps> I like breathed real deep. <laughs> of course that was a grass carp and the last one was a common. You can totally tell from the way they are how long yep, they're grass. nibbling. Yeah, grass nibbles a lot more. But what were we, what were we saying? Um We'll do it again sometime? I don't know. After uh, that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there was something more. Mm. I, I slipped out of my head now. Uh, but yeah, patience is the key. Mm -hmm. Always let the fish tell you what they are doing. Always. Like, as you said, you would probably would have gone there if mm -hmm. you were alone. Mm -hmm. And you probably would have lost yeah. the fish there. But always wait. I, I, I rarely ever pick up a rod if he's moving. Unless he's really extremely aggressive. Mm -hmm. If he's not, uh, just wait until the float stands still and he starts uh, feeding. Mm -hmm. Or if, if he starts nibbling again, just let him nibble, wait, and when you see he takes it, just go ham on him. Yeah. Um, that frame trophy that I got yesterday, that big one, was. I think I waited almost like four in real life minutes because mm. he was he was nibbling yeah and he was at some points doing aggressive bites but i just waited until he actually went completely aggressive and mm -hmm. started eating because i mean I look at the fact afterwards if i would have lifted early and missed him i would have missed that big group <laughs> yeah 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 that's right and you never know when it's the big one yeah never tell but I knew he was big as soon as I lifted and I saw uh, the tension rise yeah. straight into red and the venga just stream uh, just screamed away well wow. was extremely fun I was kind of hoping for a blue tag common or something or a perhaps a blue tag linear because I was catching linears at the area as well that was the first frame that I caught in the area as well that's that crazy. That yeah. Frame so trophies was, have been coming out this week. I had two frame trophies this week, and I don't yeah. usually catch frames or big frames. Yeah. yeah. So I was completely shocked when mm -hmm. it was rushing off like that. And I, the fish that I was catching was like common, mirror, and uh, linears. Mm. So I was kind of hoping, okay, maybe it's a blue tag common or uh, a really big uh, mirror. Mm. And actually lift up that and to see it was a framed and i just realized afterwards the frame um the frame was a 35 kg if that was a mirror mm. that's right but still yeah it was still decent mm -hmm. really fun especially when he started to ca coming close he was taking off again like in, um, I came, he came in like 20 meters, 30 meters, then boom out again, and he kept doing that back and forth, back and <laughs> forth, and then he went in, then he took out his last strength on the last push where he just steam rushed away, and then he became tired, and I just reeled him in slowly. It's actually noon, isn't it? Yeah. It is indeed middle of the day slowdown here. 
But, you know, overall, it hasn't been that. I mean, considering I've missed several fish, I mean, we've gotten 22 fish in just, just at an hour, so it's not been. Ooh. It's not been bad. Just add, uh, I think you would have caught even further. Oh, I should not have watched the chat because I think that was. Did that look like a feeding to you? Yeah, straight away feeding, but just, just wait. No, 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 no. Yeah, my fault. What's up, Rift? Uh, what'd you miss? Just me trying to learn how to float fish for carp. But yeah, if you would have actually hooked the fishes that you missed, I think you would have had probably up to 30 fish in the net. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not a bad bite rate at all. No, it isn't. It's a very decent bite rate. Absolutely. Oh, me, oh my, is it? Oh, now you're gonna die. Are you gonna end it with a double hookup? I don't know. I don't really Safe. know if that's a bite or not. I've lost all confidence. Oh, no, no, no. No, it's not. No, 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 no. All right, let's watch red. Three, three, oh, yeah. You should have picked that one up earlier. Red was already? Yeah. Oh, see, I've lost it completely then. What about uh, that? Uh, it's back uh, and no, forth, no, no, right? No, 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 no. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Who knows? I've got to get a lot more practice in. All right. Zayon, it's been great. Thank you so much for joining me. No worries. Um, as I said earlier as well, just. If you have any float questions or whatever, just whisper me in game. I'll gladly help you. Z A O N. Let him know if you've got questions, and uh, yeah, we'll do this again sometime, all right? Absolutely. Okay, I'll catch you later. Thanks again. No worries. All right, later. Control right click once if it doesn't hook. Yeah, yeah, Rift. I, I, that did work for me some tonight. That's not bad. Considering how many fish I, fish I missed there, it's not bad at all. All right, so we're going to we're going to tuba right now. And um, 